AI is just so brand new. It's so many systems that they're afraid for you to connect into with this AI stuff. If you don't talk about it from their language, putting it in the way they can truly understand it. And part of that is you have to take what you're doing and integrate it into what they're what their operation is in order for them to really fully grasp. You're calling off too much or, or fighting on the job or, or something like that. they rather deal with that just to maintain the integrity of how their businesses were originally structured. And they're looking at it from the standpoint of, will this new integration of something from an integration disrupt my system the way I have it right now? All right, you're already afraid of this. Here's some more reasons why you should be afraid. <laughs> guys are having challenges selling your AI services to businesses and I brought a business investor you may know him by the name of Curtis on here to explain why you might be having problems selling AI services Curtis go ahead and start so one one of the reasons why you may have some problems is that the whole notion of understanding and trusting issues from the business owner. The business owner really might lack understanding of AI. And if you don't, a, a confused mind never buys. And then if the business owner really doesn't understand, you know, kind of what's going on, then and AI's capability. And so you have to really craft it in a way that it's like speaking a different language. It's almost as if we are in the early 2000s where when the internet was fresh and new and people really didn't understand what was going on such that they, you, you didn't get yes. a, a lot of early, you got some early adopters and those who adopted early did very well. But for the most part, People, if you don't understand something, you can't really embrace it. And if you can't embrace it, then they're not going to buy. Okay. And so you have to put it in a language that they really understand. You have to, you have to, you know, um, what, what they call in, um, in neuro linguistic programming, pacing and then lead. You have to meet them where they are in their understanding and then gradually educate them through that process. Otherwise, you'll never get them to sign that uh, uh, sign on the bottom line and give you what you need in order to be successful. So understanding and trust For sure. is, is a big issue. Okay. And then what there are cost concerns, guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's cost concerns. A lot of people uh, in, 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 you know, in the, in the small business industries, guys, they are just now getting caught up with the idea of advertising online periods. Look, it's still a huge percentage of them buying billboards. I mean, you drive down a highway and tell me I'm lying. OK, it's still a huge percentage of them spending money, thousands of dollars a year on um, TV advertisements when nobody watches TV. All right. So they can't really like think That's true. <laughs> they can't wrap their heads around the fact that they're going to spend money with you on this imaginary thing called the internet, let alone um, now is a new branch of the internet where it's considered just artificial intelligence and you box that somehow into some type of service. Now, it's like we were talking about in the first one, it was talking about trust, guys. Like a, a lot of you guys, you want to charge three, five, ten thousand dollars for this AI uh, automation service, and they don't even trust you to do SMMA. They don't even trust you to do SEO yet, right? AI is just so brand new. It's so many things that can like come from the left side and and from the right side. Uh, costs that just can come out of anywhere. Systems that they're afraid for you to connect into with this AI stuff. Like they're afraid that it might throw off little little things that they already have going, programs that they already have going, right? And then they don't know how how much it's going to cost. Like when you reach out to them and you use the power word AI, see, you think that that is an advantage. You've been taught by all these other YouTubers that uh, putting that power word AI in the pitch is going to uh, make them interested and excited. But when a business owner is thinking about new, 
they're thinking about expensive. When you think of a new car on a lot, do you think of affordable or do you think that they're going to try to get the maximum amount of money for it because it has the word new on it? Right. Absolutely. Fresh off the lot, fresh off the sh the showroom. They're thinking like that. So if you say, hey, um, you guys have tried social media marketing. You tried TikTok marketing. You tried Facebook ads. You've tried everything. But now we have AI automation. In their mind, it's like cha ching, cha ching, cha ching. Not cha ching in a good way. Like meaning they got to open the cash register and give you a crap load of stuff for something that they don't even believe is going to work. So unless you make it extremely cheap, the market is so like I know the technology is not brand new, but as far as people being able to access it and sell it, it's so brand new that it's not proven yet to to business owners. It is not common knowledge yet. So they're going to be afraid to spend top dollar for it unless they bought one of your services before previously and had a good experience. So I recommend or my recommendation would be like I always tell you guys. What everybody else is selling, you use that as bait and give that away for free. So if you see all of these people using the power word AI, keep in mind the cost concerns of the business owner. Keep in mind the trust concerns of the business owner and just give that. If you really want to prove the market for AI services, give that away for free and then sell something that nobody else can replicate or copy that uh, for hire, right? That is extremely valuable that a business owner won't be afraid of or skeptical of, right? And, and Curtis made a big point. Like he said, put it in terms that they're going to understand. When, when I was selling uh, ads or SEO, I took the terms that they would understand. I talked about the billboards. I talked about the TV uh, commercials. I talked about the uh, uh, the radio ads. I talked about the stuff that I knew that they knew about. And then I would convert that to online talk. So I tell them that we're going to take that uh, billboard, right? That is stationary, that people just pass by, that you can't track, right? And we're going to put that same billboard message on everybody's phones in the city. And now instead of them being able to drive past it, it's going to be on their phones right in their face. And they can look at it and look at your information as long as it takes for them to make a decision to call you and blah, blah, blah. So they understood the billboard terminology. So if you can find some way to do that with AI... <laughs> Without it still sounding scary, because all they're thinking about is iRobot right now. All they're thinking about is maximum overdrive where the machines come to life and kill you. <laughs> all they're thinking about it is, is stuff like that. You hear me? Johnny Five or something. They don't really know how effective AI uh, services can be. What? If I don't have, I have no idea what happened. It said uh, your uh, browser prevented recording and then it asked me to ask you to refresh it and then it disappeared and then it disappeared can you hear me now i can hear you can you hear me clearly yeah i can hear you and it, has it been recording all this time yeah it's been recording all this time i ain't know you know like i said i'm not that familiar with this platform i ain't want to cut it off <laughs> then we have to uh, start all over start it all over uh are you able to are you able to edit? Yeah, I will. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna edit it. Okay. Yeah. Hold on. Okay. Um, all so right. Well, I can take it from the third. I back in. Yeah. Go ahead. All right. So what what normally happens is you approach someone, a business owner, and they're looking at it from the standpoint of will this new integration of something from an integration of your system will that new integration allow, what will it disrupt my system the way I have it right now? And what you have to do is, first, you have to really understand what their system is, how things are processed. And you can do that in the, by doing the life of a customer from the time the customer walks in to the time the customer is through, uh, walk out and what actually happens in that whole process from the front office to the back office, 
what happens? And then you can look at, okay, my solution, my AI solution can be integrated into these pieces of that system. And here's how much that those pieces cost you, Mr. or Miss Business Owner. And here's how much you'll be able to save by seamlessly integrating that. Because if you don't tell them that way, that seamless integration will go past them and they really won't understand the benefits of what you're bringing to them if you don't talk about it from their language. Again, we talk about language. You talk about putting it in their, um, the way they can truly understand it. And part of that is you have to take what you're doing and integrate it into what their what their operation is in order for them to really fully grasp it. And and you need to literally give them kind of like a before and after. Right now, before we do this, you're doing this. After we finish, we're going to put this integration in here and this will allow you the freedom and time and reduction in costs of doing this. And this is how it would be much so much better. And so, you know, you can do everything from the integration of automating your your uh, your email system and how you can pull things together, you know, even using a tool like Zapier, pull things together and integrate that into the system, showing them how that would would go. They would go from spending five hours a week to literally spending 30 minutes a week or even less would help them understand how the integration would not, you know, disrupt their system. But right now, all they look at is how will this new fangled invention disrupt what I have currently? Because the one thing that you don't want to do is disrupt their money flow, right? And so that's that's a concern that they will have as it relates to AI integrating Mm. into systems. And let me just reiterate, y'all, I have Curtis on a lot of these calls with me for authority, okay? Uh, Authority and true business insight. So what do I mean by that? A lot of the channels you're watching is just by marketers. A lot of channels that you're watching about SMMA or AI automation services and, and all of that stuff is just purely from other marketers and advertisers. So you never really fully get the in, you know, intel or, or the perspective of a business owner. Uh, you know, business owners have never really told you how it feels to be reached out to and prospected to or why they turn people down or mm-hmm. why they're not interested. They usually just say they're not interested. Right. So you're, we're on here right now with a business owner telling you why if someone was to approach with this AI automation services stuff, he might be turned off instead of attracted. All right. Right. So give me one second. All right. So let me go into data privacy and security. This is extremely important, guys. Um, Like, as y'all know, Cash App themselves have been hacked like dozens of time and people have lost millions and millions of dollars and stuff and the result of that and cash app could only ensure a percentage of what people have lost and everything like that same thing with paypal and a lot of these companies so business owners are aware that the more they get plugged into a lot of this internet stuff especially now you're adding intelligent technology to their their businesses that's making them scary not just because they're gonna spend money with you they're making you're making them afraid (laughs) because of data breaches and hacks and all of that stuff like the the more plugged in they are with a lot of these things the less secure they are that something bad uh won't happen right so like (laughs) adopting new ai solutions you know i'm saying Now they're going to have to set up. Now you're going to might you might even have to set up something else, which could be an opportunity for you. But something that could prevent the data breaches. But if 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 Cash App haven't figured it out, 
I don't know what you're going to do with your little budget. Right. You know, but something that might be able to, uh, uh, um, you know, secure their customer data that they have and everything like that. So, guys, that, that's why this stuff is attractive to us as marketers and advertisers, because we say, "Ooh, something new and shiny to sell is an opportunity for us to sell. But we're not looking at it from the flip side of the business owner like, oh, snap something new and shiny that they're trying to sell me <laughs> that's that I'm going to have to get used to that I'm going to have to like learn maybe uh um uh, that might destroy everything or make huge changes we're looking at all the ways that they can make good changes and that's good to be optimistic right but the, uh, the when you built something from the ground up and it's your baby you're defensive of it. And all you're thinking about is all the ways the world can hurt it. You're not thinking about it. When you have a kid, if any of you have kids, I have children. Mm -hmm. I'm not waking up in the morning thinking of all the good things the world wants to give my children and how good the police want to hug my kids. No, <laughs> I wake up in the morning thinking of all the stuff I have to protect my children from. Right. When, if you own any assets, you get insurance on it because you're thinking of all the stuff that could possibly go wrong. So maybe you guys that want to sell this AI stuff should start with the negatives first. That way you can get rid of the skepticisms and insecurities. Uh, give instead of calling a business or messaging the business and telling them all the, the things that can go right, because in their mind, they're already they know what you want. You want to sell them something. So sales like is always going to be structured to where it can show you the good stuff. Right. Maybe you should show them all the ways things can go bad and then say, well, if it's set up like this, all of those bad things I told you about will never happen. Right. But at least you gain their trust and they see that you're transparent with them and honest and stuff when everybody else is sending them pitches all day. Send them send them a little uh, a little uh, guide uh, or something. Seven things that can go horribly wrong if you uh, plug AI into your business, right. because it's on their minds, guys. I'm not going to lie to you. Businesses are thinking about it. They're intrigued. They're curious, but they're afraid. They're frightened. They're like scared out of their minds ab about what it can mean for so many different reasons. So go ahead and meet them where they are instead of always trying to uh, 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 migrate or transport somebody. Right. Meet them where they are. All right. You're already afraid of this. Here's some more reasons why you should be afraid. <laughs> and then now that we got the chills off, now that the, the little little chill bumps and then got off you the goosebumps and all of that, how about this? This is some good stuff that can happen when those bad things don't happen. All right. So that's just a little 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 tip for y'all that want to continue selling it. But like me and Curtis always tell y'all, we will use this stuff. Another thing that could get the fur off is if you just give it to them for free as a test like this and, and then sell them something that is really unique to your business something that's familiar but unique to their business why do i say familiar because we don't want to get caught up in the same ai trap where you're selling them something that they like don't know nothing right. about right so sell them something familiar but is 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 packaged unique and it has advantages over the other things that are familiar to that right, right? Okay. Um, that, that sort of leads. So go ahead into lack of customization. Yeah, that, that, that leads into lack of customization because if you if you don't customize it and understand it, it specifically not only that industry but that specific business and what their issues are and what their constraints are, because even though two businesses can be in the same industry customization says i'm going to solve the constraint of a particular business based on where they are now and so you want to one size mm -hmm. does not fit all as it relates to customization you absolutely have to customize it and and you may have you know several solutions along the path 
of from the time the customer walks in to the time you ring the cash register to help the the business owner or to get more customers in because that may be that's obviously one of the big issues right and it has to be customized to that particular business lack, lack of customization will get you to the point where the business is saying well that wouldn't work for me that solution wouldn't work for me if you really understand so. the customization, you really understand that you really have to understand that business, which means that there may be more than one consultation. You may, you need to understand the business and then craft a solution for that business that would entail a an AI solution or any other type of solution for to, to ring the cash register because that's what you're really trying to do. At the end of the day, they're trying to not lose any but, uh, money and to that's that's the first law and then the second law is i want to you know add to what i have and disruption losing money and adding to what they have if you don't customize it you can't present a um a a, a solution to them that would really that they can say yeah that really helps me i i i, I clearly can see how sure. that will help me so customization becomes huge in that. And it also allows them to see the vision that you see when you're bringing it to them. For sure. Now, let me add something to that. Let's be honest, y'all. Let me know in the comments if I'm wrong, though. Uh, majority of y'all have gotten your education from the same place a lot of us got our education from. Binge watching YouTube tutorials and stuff. Majority of you guys are out there selling the same stuff. You going to these places and a lot of it's templated and you don't know enough code. Let me say that again. A lot of it's templated so you don't even know enough code to make it customized for each business that you're dealing with. So when they tell you, yeah, I, I like this, but I kind of want it like this, but they don't have the budget for that and you don't know how to tweak it yourself. What are you going to do then? You see what I'm saying? And that's the problem with the AI thing is moving so fast that everything is templated and people want to catch the wave. So they haven't been able to slow down enough to become uh, 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 knowledgeable enough or even experienced in the stuff like we're talking about with the customization. So you're pretty much just going to give everybody like with, with me, like I have assets that I teach my students on. They're all templated assets, right? They're templated. I don't know how to build that stuff, right? I have no idea how to build uh, uh, um, uh, like an, an affiliate network from scratch or, or, or any of that type of right. stuff, right? And that's what you guys are pitching with, right? Like, like you're pitching to like a whole crap load of businesses. But the problem is these businesses are all thinking the same thing. Well, that's cool, but can't you tweak it like this a little bit? Because my business is this, that, this. Oh, we deal with these type of people, blah, blah, blah. Oh, the customer journey is this. So those steps wouldn't work. Can't you add this right here? And if you don't know how to do everything that Liam Otley and, and a lot of the top AI automation dudes know how to do, you're a lot of them are just selling, no offense to them, but a lot of them are just selling you their templates. They know how to customize them, though. You don't. So they're always going to have a leg up on their students. They're always going to have a leg up on on you because they took the time to know how to actually customize it or have enough money to be able to hire people that can do that. You're coming to YouTube typing in how to make money online. So you don't have the time, experience or money to hire out or learn how to do all of these things that the the, the businesses that you want to sell all of these high ticket services to is are going to want like that that's that's a great, just being real y'all that, that's a great point so no code does not mean there's no code that just means that you're not doing any code <laughs> right and so mm -hmm. and so when uh, here's a great example Yasriel, you you did uh, a lot of videos, a great series on uh, GPTs, right? If you want to take that GPT over yeah. to uh, off that platform and over to a uh, a chat bot, 
you're going to have to learn some code or hire yep. somebody in order to do that. Yep. So no code don't mean no code, you know? Exactly. And if the, if the owner says... Exactly. You notice. You notice? No. Go ahead. I'm sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. If the owner says, okay, ahead, this is ahead. all great, but I don't want my people to have to hit the link. I want them to come to my website and I want to take all this information, all this latent information, uh -huh. and I want to put it over to my site, you know, as a chat bot. I want to put my guru, you know, my plumbing guru over on my site and, and I want to take it from the GPTs exactly. and put it over there. How do you do that? You know, you, you, exactly. if, if that's what you're selling, you don't know how to do that. And so now you got it. And, and partnership is great. I'm not, I'm not, yeah, that's what we should be doing. We should be leveraging other people, but recognize that everyone is going to have some form of customization and you need to be ready for that. Exactly. So we just don't want to keep y'all in the dark. We're not saying that you can't sell AI automation services. Absolutely. We're not saying that uh, it's impossible to sell it because people are making money That's with it. Money. But what I, what we are saying is um, is not going to be some easy thing, right? If unless you already have them as a client and you're just upselling somebody that you already have, then that's that's different. It's always easier to sell something to somebody that's bought something from you before. But brand new, completely new stranger prospects and stuff, a lot of this stuff is going to be difficult uh, for them to wrap their head around. And the only way, one of the only ways they're going to be on board with it is through customization. If you can show them an outline, a blueprint, detailed illustration of exactly how it's going to work for their business specifically, meaning you've done research on their entire like structure and, and the sequences and the funnel, what happens after somebody opts in and their pricing structure and, and and what happens if somebody was to call on the phone and you you that mean you've done all of that. See, these people aren't telling you this. That is the best way for it to actually work for you. But who wants to put in like that much time you, when you're in the field where it's so much competition? Right. And y'all all look alike. I was watching uh, Fear of the Walking Dead with my children the other day. It's a zombie show. I don't know if y'all know. <laughs> but it's like a little spinoff of The Walking Dead. And it was a lot of dead bodies that weren't infected with the zombie virus laying on the ground. And the people were mad at the soldiers uh, for, for killing those innocent people. But is like this. If all of these humans, if you scared, full of adrenaline, you got the gun and you don't want to get bitten because you know what that means and, and all of that stuff. And it's just an army of people running towards you. Some of them are bloody. Some of them you can barely see and just everything is going. How do you not shoot the innocent people? No offense, but how do you not? Right. They're coming at you full force. Everybody's running top speed, the regular humans and the zombies. You don't know who's freaking who. You're just going to light them all up. Just just being honest. If we're being like honest in the heat of the moment with all adrenaline rush and pumping and you're trying and you're in survival mode and you don't know who's who. So your mama might get get it. You hear me? Like you just you don't, don't know. freaking know. So it's the same thing with you guys selling these AI automation services, trying to reach out to these businesses. You don't look different. They can't tell who's who. They've heard it before. They've seen it before. Your pitch is exactly the same. That's why I had to give you the recommendation earlier. Tell them something bad. Don't tell them something right. good, right? Like Because everybody looks the same. So if these dudes really cared about your your uh, success with AI automation and stuff, they will tell you to look different. They wouldn't give you just just telling you the same thing they tell a million people they'll tell you. Like when I tell my students, even when I give them a script, I tell them, okay, now you can try to like tweak that or reword it or, or try to, I'll give them the formula and an example of the irresistible offer and tell them now play around pause with it and you try to get good at it so you can start practicing and making your own irresistible offers. Why? Because I know that if everybody that learns from me and go out and says the same thing, then it's not going to be so irresistible. It ain't going to work that That's way. Right. 
right? So selling this AI automation stuff can see through the door, but a lot of these dudes were practicing it behind the scenes two, three months before it blew up on YouTube and, and the channels blew up. So they 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 got a hundred freaking clients with AI automation before you even saw the first video. You know what I'm saying? So it's not saying you can't do it, but it's just it's it's scary to the business owner. And it should be scary to you if you look like everybody else. You need to package stuff right. Right? Yeah. right? But anyway, um we'll go into fear of fear job of replacement. replacement. Go ahead, you tackle that. So so one of the things that is like very important is that that the the media has made it such that uh, there's 300 million jobs that's going to be replaced in the next five years with AI. And and you, you know that, that that is something that owners are looking at every day. I mean, they, they get bombarded with that every single day, you know, that that there's going to be, uh, you know, that. And, and they're looking at it from a disruptive perspective as well as a you know, how can this help my business? But I'm not McDonald's. I don't have an unlimited supply of money such that I can replace these workers with a with a robot that will flip burgers for me. Right. And so they're looking at it from the standpoint <laughs> of, you know, how is this going to impact um, the my my workforce and am I getting here's a big deal am I getting the most production out of my workforce because they're scared that I'm going to replace them with something that's going to come along right you know um, and so Boom. if you are in fear of your job every day how productive can you be on the job. Right. How much are you bringing to the job? How much are you taking from the job in order to do something else to secure you and your family? And that from a worker perspective, that's what they're thinking. And so from an owner perspective, that's what they're thinking as well. They're thinking about the worker and how much productivity that they are losing as a result of everybody being scared about the AI apocalypse that's that's on the way. Right. And so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, 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 I mean, golly, that, that is huge. There are some jobs that you're just not going to be able to replace, but there are a lot of jobs that they are. And so what do you do with those displaced workers? How do you handle that? How can they add more value in the job that they're currently doing such that AI becomes a, a helpmate as opposed to a replacement? And so you got to think about that exactly from the, from Woo. their perspective as well, right? You just killed it with that. Like you should structure it to where as a helpmate instead of a replacement, guys. Because don't run from the fears that business owners have. Embrace Race. them and come with Race. solutions to calm Race. all that down, right? Because you are excited about this because it's a money opportunity. But to tell you the truth. Think about this, man. Um, uh, he made a big point about the uh, the business owners being afraid of how their workers are going to react. Check this out. There is something that might be new to everybody watching called loyalty. <laughs> that might be a new concept, right? But check this out. There's an underworld. And this underworld is full of business owners and employees that don't want AI to take over. There is. They they are and they are loyal to humans. Right. 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 So right. they like you're not even thinking about it when you're reaching out to them, but they rather deal with the headaches of people showing up late. Uh, um, um, uh, cursing people out, you know what I'm saying? People calling off too much or, or fighting on the job or, or something like that. They rather deal with that just to maintain the integrity of how their businesses were originally structured, right? Lines and lines and generations and generations of, of employees being able to thank the business owners for having a way to feed their families and stuff like that. A lot of these business owners 
think like that. Like, I'm not going to take like I know how we think we're, we're like, yo, you can save money. You won't be able to have to pay as many wages as you do right now. But they're thinking, hold on. I'm that's one of the things I get fulfillment from is feeding, being able to say I feed so many families a year. You know, you know what would my business be if I'm just the head of some robots? Right. You hear me? Like, what, 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 what would it be then? Like, how would I get fulfillment? This is the world would be horrible and lonely. You understand? So we're not even looking at it from that standpoint because we're marketers and advertisers that just want money. No offense, but that's what we that's what are. You got to look at it from their side. I wouldn't I wouldn't even be selling AI. I'm just being real with you. I use that stuff as bait, but I would not use it as like a full service because I know how how scared of it people are. The little Zapier integrations and stuff, that stuff is harmless. No problem. But some like like he said, uh it's gonna start being so advanced where people will actually start seeing, oh damn, I can see how this can destroy the whole workforce. And you guys ain't even gonna be able to get a consultation with a business owner when that happens. So is a is is budding right now, but it's gonna have a quick fall too, where business owners gonna be like, nope, nope, I don't, I don't want it. I'm good. I'm cool. So go ahead, get it while the getting is good. Go ahead, uh, Curtis, yeah. to the next. So one. the next one is you know understanding or uncertain ROI, you know, and and the demonstration of ROI to the business owner because first they got a new product here. Then they have to integrate it into their system. Then they have to get the employees to embrace it in some way. And then now you have to really understand, well, what's that return on investment for me? Because most of us are out there getting a a retainer fee, right? And so, you know, now I'm I'm paying $500, $1,000, $1,500, $10,000, you know, and I don't even know what my return on investment is going to be. And that's that's a risk that a lot of people in right now in this environment aren't willing to take. Cuz you got to think about the environment that we're in. You turn on the television and they talk about inflation, they, we're at war in several places around the world in which we're intervening in that. How is the macroeconomics of the world going to impact, you know, Main Street? They're thinking about that as well. They're trying to brace for the worst that comes in. And so they may not be as open to with their purse strings as possible, especially if you cannot demonstrate a clear, concise ROI. So as an example, we know that it, it doesn't if you are consistently taking your uh, your telephone list and your your SMS list and your emails and you're consistently running campaigns, they're 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 different. They're offering you're offering CPA offers, etc. You know that you're going to get a percentage of those uh, individuals. You can calculate ROI based on that. You can calculate ROI based on all the efficiencies that you show them that they that they are going to get. You can calculate ROI based on the sales bot, you know, and the data. But you got to show that you have to demonstrate that even to the point where you should, if it's, you know, you may consider doing it, showing it. I mean, having them test it and look at the ROI and then going truly live across the board, full bore. Right. Um, because if it, it is uncertain, you don't know what the ROI is unless you've tested it. Now, you can predict it and they need to be able to see that either from use cases previously, uh, cases that you guys bring up, or actual live with them. Here is the ROI. Let's, let's, let's do a campaign for two weeks and let's look at what our return is. And then we can look at what the return on investment is based on the, the real life data that, that we have. Otherwise, the business owner is going to be very, very skeptical unless they have something that they can hold on to. They can't hold on to just air, AI air, so to speak. And this this ROI, this ROI uncertainty 
ties into pretty much the first six challenges that you guys are going to have. Going back to the first one is the trust, guys. Like this is so new that even when you give them a few of your testimonials and stuff, your testimonials. See, this is the thing, right? <laughs> this is so new that your testimonials are not over years right. in length. Right. Nobody can say for the for the past 20 years, we've been doing this or doing that or 10 or even five years. You won't have any testimonials that have uh, longevity in them for a couple more years right. from now. Right. Because it, a lot of stuff can start off great and then end Absolutely. off a nightmare. And that's another thing that the business owners are going to think of. Like, how many times have you bought something like a TV? Uh, that's supposed to be new, this new $500, $1,000 TV or something like that. And it's big and it's got the flat screen or wavy and it works real good for like two months. And then this new technology wasn't, you know, like, or how about the Madison that comes on the market? If you guys are from Mines or Curtis's generation, you remember all the commercials with the lawyers and stuff. If you've taken this pill in the past year, you may be awarded money, That's blah, right. blah, 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 because you're suffering from this. You're suffering from that. But if you go back just the year before when the when the pill was new, it was the cure of this and the side effects are minimal and it's going to help you with this and all of that extra stuff. So people are caught up with making money so rapidly that the testing is not there, right? right? Like... You, the the case study your case studies are going to be so new that even though it worked for those business owners that it that you have for the case studies it's still not a proven thing you can only prove stuff over time and tribulations things have to go through time and tribulations just like a relationship and a friendship you can't meet somebody today and just because they cool and all of that stuff man that's my best friend now because we like the same movies the same music and then when you come home one day he's sleeping with your wife you didn't have time and tribulations right. with them right so you need time and tribulations these business owners need time to go through tribulations with these new AI systems. And then when you can document how they overcame whatever they ran into using this AI stuff, then the other business owners will be like, hmm, okay, well, uh, shoot, a human wouldn't have been able to like recover from that that fast or fix this or something like that, right? Now, let me go back to the other thing, uh, Curtis, the, yeah. uh, with the ROI. This is how they're... The AI automation uh, promoters are currently telling the business owners to calculate the ROI. Well, when you replace this amount of employees or you replace them uh, this, however much you're spending on employees per month mm -hmm. for this task, that's how much you can expect to save. However much you're spending on uh, virtual assistance, that's how much you can expect to save. If you are spending money on seven different softwares and we create this one automation for you, this is how much you can expect to save. So when you're doing it like that, I see why it is appealing to certain business owners and everything like that. Right. But on the flip side, they've been married to this stuff for so long. Right that is still going to be scary. It's still going to be scary to go from, watch this, 30 cold callers to that one cold calling AI that I told, uh, I, I showed in that mm -hmm. video, right? Uh, uh, the one where the AI will cold yeah. call the numbers for you. Yeah, for marketers, that sounds cool. Like for online marketer type dudes and, and stuff like that. Yeah, you know what? Now I ain't got to pay no virtual assistance. Or no commission only people. I can have the AI do that. But for we'll we'll name just somebody, somebody like a Grant Cardone who has a whole sales floor dedicated to humans that do cold calls every day. For him to just walk in there just because you cold called them and try to set up some AI talker, right? For him to just walk in there and say, "Hey, all fifty to one hundred of y'all can go home and never come back because we got AI." We got AI, oh, baby. Oh, oh, oh. You hear me? <laughs> Do y'all see how 
unrealistic or I'll just say how stubborn that'll be something that that that, that how much that's asking guys and and, and I mean let's say you do want to try it I was like yo let's 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 try it for a year or something you know what I'm saying like just for them to you call them and they supposed to just replace right. humans just based off of your little test that you did that 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 it's actually brings difficult. up a, so, a, another point that, that I think is really, really important, like hugely important. And that is you really need to understand change management. Change management is very important because you're taking them from one place to another place. And if you don't understand the There's emotions no. that go through that process, if you don't understand the change management process, you know, uh, it, it, it it's, it's very similar to, you know, when you had to go from one thing to another, when you had to go from one software to another software, when you had to go from one house exactly. to another house. Change management, you got to have a at least a fundamental understanding of how humans uh, change their behavior and how one how they move from one thing to another thing, because you're going to get rejected a lot um, because this is so new. I mean, yes. you're only going to really deal with the early adopters right now. You're not dealing with, I mean, right now, everybody's on Facebook. But at, be, at the beginning, nobody was on Facebook as it relates to how it is right now. Everybody's sure. using Twitter. Everybody's using, but at the time, you know, nobody was even using the internet. I mean, you know, it was something that was bad. Exactly. And, and, and so if you don't really understand the human psychology of change management, just a basic rudimentary understanding such that, you know, oh, that's what I'm dealing with. I'm dealing with the resistance of change management. People don't like to change. They exactly. understand where they're comfortable with. Yeah. And if it's been working for them for the last 30 years or years or five years 100. or 100 years. Man, why do I need this? You know, especially if I'm at the cusp oh. of some form of retirement. And if I'm not at the cusp of retirement, the people okay. that you're dealing with, the millennials, the generation Xers, Zers, Yers, or whatever, they're at they're with you. <laughs> they're like, okay, yeah, we I, I see this, you know. Um, and so they're learning just as much as you are. So what are you bringing that's different? You know, okay. you know, so you got to understand change. Exactly. Exactly. That was a good point right there. Like the ones that are really going to relate to what you uh, like. And I've experienced this in the like heydays of like prospecting and all of that stuff, where the ones that were closer to my age would hit me and be like, yeah, 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 man. Yeah, I, I put up I set up one of them the other day or, or they'll like show me something that they already doing. And I'm stuck looking like feeling useless now because I thought my superpower was like nobody had my damn right. superpower, right? But like the ones that, that are are going to uh, be, you know, in the know of what you're talking about, most of them, not all of them, like I said, you guys can still make some money with this, but the majority of them are already on it. A uh, majority of them are doing it themselves if they have time and are a majority of them if they're if they are, uh, um, what do you call it, informed, <laughs> they know how little this AI templated stuff right. costs. So when you try to come in and do the high ticket stuff with them, they're going to say, no, I saw this on this commercial and it was only 500 bucks. No, I saw that plug in right there. That was 30 bucks right there. No, 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 no. And you just have to keep going through numbers until you run into some old crustacean business owner uh, uh, that's willing to say, F it, let's go ahead and try it, boy. You understand? Like, but who wants to have to go through a million freaking numbers, right? Like, majority of what you're going to experience is people that's either scared, not interested, or already know what you're talking about, how much it's supposed to cost and probably doing it. And the rest of them are just the small percentage of them that would be curious or desperate enough to go ahead and say, yeah. And that means you got to divide that up, that tiny percentage amongst all of you hundreds of thousands of people that are searching AI automation service businesses 
watching these channels and stuff. All of y'all get to split that one to five percent of business owners in the world that will That's tell right. you yes. And you got to think about that every morning when you wake up. I rather create something that is proven but unique. Okay, take something that's proven and make it unique. For example, profit position and agency, my agency, we sell banks. It is proven. Banks have been around, I don't know, however many. But it was unique is now we can put it in the hands of local right. business owners. Right. Like the, the, the local business owner can own their bank instead of having to go to one. But it's still a bank. It's still it's still something familiar. Now, like all I have to do is say, hey, you know what PayPal is. You know what Stripe is. You know what Cash App is. Now you get to control your uh, uh, your employees money and you get to control your uh, customers money and keep it right. all in house. Boom. Like, that, that's it with that, right? So it's a way different pitch than what, what most people are out there doing. Look at it. Look, everybody writing that down now. <laughs> ah, sometimes I talk too much, Curtis, right? Uh, <laughs> but it's all right, though. Um, but but th- y'all need to do that. Like something, me and Curtis, we would, we would give away the AI mm-hmm. services. Just so that we can get in the conversation about the bank, which costs like seventeen something right. thousand dollars now, right? Like we would give away the SMMA because we know it's going to make them more money that they can put inside what we really want right. to sell them, right? Like that's how y'all got to think, right? Like create your theme park product. Let let the SMMA or the AI services just be the entrance. Like the little whatever they can see from the parking lot that's gonna get them to want to come into the theme park. Let that be that. The little fireworks at the at the at the entrance or or the little girls waving the little pom poms or something. Let the AI services that's drawing a lot of attention right now be what's gonna bring them into the uh the theme park so you can sell them the overpriced giant turkey leg and the eighteen dollar bottle of water. You that's hear right. me? You, 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 you. That's what you're supposed you to be think doing. Think about right? this for a moment. Think about theme parks and think about what's the largest thing in one of those carnivals that move. What do you see from the highway? What do you see from miles away? The Ferris wheel, right? That's the biggest the thing. Wheel. And, and yeah. kids go, I want to go on that. They, they, you're a mile away. And they go, I want to go on that. And, and so the Ferris wheel, which is the largest mm, thing mm. attracts you, right? Come on, he just killed y'all, man. Come on. When you Woo, get there, he just killed y'all. So you're not even you're not even paying for really the 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 ticket or the in, like. You're paying for the dang on exactly. Ferris wheel, <laughs> you because you're paying for like like. For real, like the attractions, like we put so much emphasis on the entry fee. Like, yo, these tickets, I'm trying to sell these six flags or these Disney World tickets. Forget all that. Did you know that inside Disney World, you can eat at their restaurants? They got these extremely expensive souvenir shops. They have all the rides and attractions. And not just that, they have hotels or not hotels, but motels inside the freaking park itself. Right. Inside, just letting you know you need to stay here for a while and spend money with me. You hear me? So while we're putting so much emphasis on the selling of the, oh man, I see that's getting, that's trending right now. Let me sell that. No, 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 no. Use what's trending as the Ferris wheel. That they can see from a freaking far, right? And then they'll pay the ticket to get to the first wheel. They'll pay the entry fee to get to the first wheel. But if you're trying to sell the ticket, you know, they don't really care. They don't know the value of it. And then everybody's trying That's to right. sell them tickets. Movie tickets, uh, 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 freaking circus tickets, all of that stuff. But what they see 
is the freaking Ferris wheel from the highway. That's absolutely right. So you need to sell them the Ferris wheel. Yo, look at this Ferris wheel. Look at all the lights on the Ferris wheel. You can hear the screams of enjoyment and pleasure from the dang on far. Don't you just want to get on this Ferris wheel for the low, low price of blank? You can get on this Ferris wheel. Ignore the ticket. Ignore the talk. Oh, you get to come into Six Flags for this much. No, 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 no. You get to get this Ferris wheel. You get on, you get to get on a ninja. You get to get on a Batman ride, the Superman ride. Right. You get to get on, on all of that. You hear me? Like, and you get a season's pass, meaning you can ride these rides as many times as, they, as you want to. You hear me? Like, that's what they want to hear. They don't want to hear, yeah, man, uh, season's pass wow. is, uh, going to be this much and this much. They don't want to hear that. Like, that sounds like, uh, yeah, no. What rise do you want to get on? You hear me? So right now you guys are selling the tickets. You're selling the, the what's trending. Ooh, Six Flags Fright Night. Blah, blah, blah. They don't care about all that. They care about the attractions, right? So you should be focusing on getting people into the theme park. And the the scary part is, guys, y'all, your theme park isn't even, and mine either, but <laughs> our theme parks even is, uh, isn't even as uh Big of brand uh, of a, a recognized brands as the ones we're using as an example. So these theme parks can you they can do these high high ticket entry fees and all of that because they spent hundreds of years building their brands to where you'll just go there, right? But a lot of us just got the little small town right. carnival, right? But you're trying to charge Six Flags in, in Disney World ticket prices. And they don't even know if your rides are going to break down. That's a great yet. point. Yeah, they don't know if your rides are going to break down. You haven't been proven and tested with with like years and years of people coming home with with images and pictures of experiences and happiness and all of that. We ain't did that. Your little AI automation uh, uh, testimonials are just from this year or maybe right. last year. That's not enough. Like, think about what what was that platform? Uh, um, uh, Periscope. Think about Medium. They started off and it was buzz and it was hype and you just like everybody was live on freaking Periscope and I was starting to feel stupid like, damn, why well, I ain't going live on Periscope? And then, boom, look at them. Where, now where, they gone. Where is Twitter House? I mean, I don't hear no... Oh, yeah. It, it, see, there we go. Another one that was supposed to be bigger than all the rest of the... See, the market share is so huge uh, uh, um, that these other platforms own that if you if you don't have something extremely unique, then they're going to gobble you up right. eventually. People are going to just say, ah, I can do this over there. Ah, this feature is over there. I'll just go back home to Facebook. I'll just go back home. Even though Facebook is getting old, I'm familiar with it. I'll just go back. I'll just go back. And that's exactly what they're going to do with these AI services. Eventually, oh, the cool stuff is going to calm down. And they're going to be like, look, whatever. Whatever, y'all. Like, whatever. I don't want that. I don't want that. Like, Periscope is out of there. Medium, nobody talks about Medium. And like he just said, Clubhouse dog, like, even with something a tiny bit unique, they you still ain't, ain't nobody talking about Clubhouse no more. And then I got caught up with it with the threads thing. And then that's it. Within, like, as fast as it came yeah. in, it went out. You hear me? Like, <laughs> so it's the same thing. Like, I don't even check to see how, I don't even know if I got any followers over there. <laughs> Like, don't nobody care. You hear me? That's the same thing with this AI automation stuff. Like, my videos on AI automation used to get phew. like the biggest channel, the biggest um video on the channel is almost 400,000 views. And that's from Chat GPT and AI automation. Now I upload one in that mug, be lucky to get to 300 views or something. It comes in super fast. And it goes the hell out super fast. And that's what this offer is, guys. We're already into the second or third year of this AI automation thing. A couple more years, ain't nobody even going to get on a consultation call with you. Unless just something just, unless they just invent something just, it's the same thing like with crypto. Like, dog, like, it was a point in time where we were talking about crypto on this dang on channel. Now, who talking about crypto now? That's like literally 
It's like, who cares? You hear me? So, like, we have to stop putting so much weight on trends. We have to start uh, giving things time to mature. I know, I know, first movers advantage, early adopters, and all of that extra stuff. I want to be grandfathered in. I'm not saying don't touch on the, the trend. But what I'm saying is maybe I shouldn't try to uh, like is whole agencies on AI automation. I would just stay with what is proven. What is proven? Marketing agency. I'm a marketing agency. I wouldn't make myself an AI agency. <laughs> Calling myself a marketing agency means that I'll be able to still be labeled under that anytime any trend comes around without me looking foolish. When AI automation is gone, a lot of y'all just going to have some stale, dead websites that don't nobody right. go to. Exactly. Because it is going to die out. It's a buzzword. You hear me? Like, it's going to die out. And a lot of y'all are building out. Like, that's super scary. No. build a, If you're going to have a marketing agency, make it a marketing agency. Don't make it a TikTok. Y'all did that with TikTok. Oh, TikTok agencies. Now you can't sell any type of ooh short form agencies. Okay, now YouTube is starting to go back to long form right. content. TikTok, TikTok is allowing people to upload five to ten minutes now. You hear me? Like I'm a short form content. Hey, this is the new wave. It's the new wave for this year. Right. <laughs> you hear me? So all it is get get it while you can type of living is not consistent or sustainable. <laughs> You hear me? And I learned my lesson from that. Like, I don't want to hop on that stuff no more and put so much weight on stuff like that no more. Because when it goes away, you be feeling stupid or helpless or with that. So what do I do now, Face? You hear me? <laughs> I'm talking from experience. The, the other thing that's very important here is is to understand that the business owner is not stupid. And what I mean by that is. If you go over to the university, i.e. YouTube free university, and there are thousands mm -hmm. upon thousands of stuff about AI agency, there, there's nothing that stops the business owner from looking at Liam's, uh, his, his videos as well, right? Or sending one of their employees to research the videos to really understand what the cost is you know, what the raw costs are and if they can replicate that without you. And so you go in. Ooh. I mean, that, think about it for a moment. See, see, see that, that's, that's what I was talking about, man. Low. Curtis, he be dropping my man. The barrier to entry is low. And if you aren't unique, if you aren't different, if you can't say they don't... It, I, I understand that, but that's only a part of the offering that I'm offering you that would help you. Yeah, you can do that piece. You can put a chat bot on there. And here is the whole suite of things. Here's the whole, if you would, the, the whole amusement park that cannot be replicated because it's unique to what we do. That's the difference. That's exactly. the difference because anybody can go over to, I mean, YouTube is free. Just remember that YouTube is free, which means that just like you got an education over there, the owner can get an education. They may not put, they may not, you know, be learning uh, voice flow, but they can still get an education to understand it. And they can still get an education to the point where they don't get ripped off. And so you got to think about that from that perspective exactly. as well. Don't think that, oh, they, I'm exactly. going to come in there and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save them because they don't know about it. They may not be familiar, but the moment that you say something, they can go directly. It's just a quick YouTube.com oh. and a search AI agency. Boom. There you go. Boom. And let, let me add to that, man. Let me add to that. Like some of the biggest purchases I've made were to things that I just knew for sure I couldn't copy. Like a lot of business owners, uh, let, let me go in and add to what Curtis said. He said that some of them will come to YouTube and see if they can figure it out. 
I know what your rebuttals are going to be in the in the in the in the audience already. Oh well, we're trying to find the business owners that don't have time to do that. That's why it's AI automation. You're Absolutely. correct. I got that. But then something else Curtis said right after that, if y'all was paying attention, is that they'll send their employees, the ones, the same ones that you're trying to replace and tell me them employees won't figure it out to keep their job. <laughs> they'll send their employees. Dude, it was a no lie. Watch this. It was a dude that I was prospecting to for a freaking $10,000 was it? I think an SEO or or um, it was something like that. And I just thought I was cold. I, th I thought my skills was cold. I sent him and this is for a, a lot of you loom uh, loom video senders out here where you send them a little, uh, you know, loom video of what you're going to do for their business and all of that. Right. <laughs> I did the same thing. I've been doing this for a while, y'all. I did the same thing. And I showed him what I was going to do. And he took forever to get back to me. Why did he get back to me with examples of what I was going to do and charge him all that money for? His son, in that month's time, went and learned what I was doing. Like he went and learned, like he don't know everything that I was doing, but for the most part, the most impressive stuff that I was talking about, like I'll give you an example. It's something that I teach my students uh, how to how to rank videos on the first page of Google uh, within a couple of minutes or within 24 hours. In the video that he sent me back, his son went and did that. <laughs> his son went and ranked them for some keywords on the first page of Google. His son went and got a press release that ranked on the first page of Google, and it only cost them a, a couple hundred bucks right. to do. And I was trying to charge them, but I, I had a whole bunch of other stuff I was going to do for him, of course. But still, like once he once that business owner saw that he could do that much without me, it's nothing that I could say to him that would like reinstill his confidence in me that that, right. that he needs me you hear me like once he saw that he could do some of the impressive stuff it's like you okay just, well whatever else this dude was offering i'm pretty sure we can figure that out too and i lost that potential client so for those of you sending loom vid videos this might be another reason why you ain't getting nothing back because they probably going to see right. If they can do it or sending one of their employees that you're trying to replace, go see if you can figure this out real quick. If we can't figure it out, we'll hire this guy. If we can, we just going to ignore that bum. And I'm guaranteeing you that's what a lot of them are saying to you, <laughs> saying right. about you. I mean, so, you know, yeah. let, let's talk about let, let's really <laughs> and we can wrap this up. But I, I want to just bring up inside the inside the training that we provide. We provide the eight R's. Right. And they, those are coupled with the the you know, the. Um, the 10 uh, way monetization steps and that eight R's coupled with that makes it unique because yeah. the eight R's are foundational principles of innovation. They are hacks of innovation that 90% of all innovations that you see today have been based on. That's totally unique. Eight R's is totally unique. And then when you blend it with the 10 monetization steps, that's a product that no one can basically uh, replicate because it's unique to what we came up with. Right. I mean, you can try to copy it, but there's depth. Yeah to that. There's understanding to that. And so when you try to go and say, well, I can pick up this book on innovation and I can do this, it's 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 still not the same. It's not the same. You can't just go out there the and same. go, okay, well, let me go get something on the eight R's. No, you can't. No, you can't. And on top of that, guys, you can't rep, you can't like transfer or copy years of experience either that's one thing you can't do like curtis has bought and sold businesses for years which is why i partnered with him on the agency to partner project i've been doing marketing and advertising 
throughout all the trends and survived since the the beginning of 2015, which you can trace back and got and seen crazy success, crazy success, both of us. Right. So with that wealth of knowledge and experience, that makes agency the partner program unique, as well as the uh, the uh, the eight R's he just brought up. On top of that, our partnerships that we are building, guys, they're about to start coming in so fast that it will be I'm not saying you can't do it, but these partnerships that we're doing are going to be difficult to like right. go out and get. Not exactly. saying you can't do it. Not saying you can't do it. Some people take that as a I'm going to go and try. Go and do it. I want you guys to go and do it, guys. You can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. But my thing is, is unique. Is not something that anybody else is talking about in the business buying realm. So our, our product or our membership is disrupting multiple markets, is disrupting the business buying market. That's where you guys hear about Cody Sanchez and Roland Frazier and a lot of those guys. And then it's disrupting the agency, uh, marketing agency market or model, right? Because now we're trying to teach the agency owners, since they have all the skills, that they should become partial owners or at least equity holders of these businesses that they're doing all of this marketing stuff for so that they can make 10 times or more what they've been making with these businesses. So agency to partner, like he said, is not a program or a, a, a membership that you're just going to say, ah, OK, well, let me go to this YouTube channel over here. They teach the same thing. No, we're not just in there teaching you tips and tricks or, or um, uh, marketing and all of that stuff, because most of you guys, if you're agency owners, you should know that stuff. We're showing you how to make that change seamlessly because you were talking about changes earlier, right? seamlessly from an agency owner to a partner or instead of buying businesses a traditional way a new creative way of doing it or instead of buying businesses period an alternative to that and still getting the benefits of a person that actually bought the business all of that is inside agency to partner which is why we have 5k for the price tag which will There's be going up soon all right for this holiday we we do have uh, 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 um, the special that you guys can find in the right. pinned comments, right? If you don't want to wait for it to go up to fifteen to twenty five thousand dollars, which is income tax money, this would be the chance for you guys to go ahead and get not one but two coaches. Me and Curtis, he is tackling the business buying and selling side of the coaching situation with the eight R's and the equity equity stuff. And I am showing you how to position yourself, create the offers and convert from the agency uh, business model, the agency owner business model to being a partial owner or, you know, what making the marriage work. So you have the best of both worlds inside the agency, the partner program. If you are struggling to make money or if you're struggling to buy a business or if you're struggling to stop being a slave in an agency business model, then. That's where it's, where is it right a, there? What you want to say? Third market that we, we are out. actually disrupting as well, and that is the business buying the business broker model. The business oh, broker snap, model <laughs> is a one and done model for them. It is just like a real estate agent. In fact, a business broker literally is a real estate agent on the commercial side, right? And so it's a one and done type of. Uh, a type of transaction. Once you sell a business, you're done with them. We're disrupting that part of it as well to allow them to partake in a much longer uh, spans of opportunity for income, right? Uh, and so, and yep. they can work with, here, here's the interesting thing. Right now, they really only prospect and work with those that they have listings on. Now they can work, they can go back and work with those that they sold a business to who, uh, so that's one who they have listings for that's been lingering for the last few years. That's two who they currently are focused in on the current listing. That's three. And then the future in terms of, uh, telling their prospects how they have a, 
uh, a superpower and a unfair advantage over all the other brokers. That's four. So past, past, present, future. Total disruption of that market for those business brokers. And so that becomes important as well. For so. Sure. Hey guys, if you're not at at least 200K per month or don't know how to get there at least, then Agency to Partner uh, program can help you uh, with those things. When you plug in the eight R's with the 10 monetization steps, then that puts you on the track to being on your way there. And the good thing about what we teach guys is once you find a few partners or you're related to a few uh, partners, once it's plugged in, a lot of this becomes effortless. We want to grow right. when the business grow. If you're a, a, a marketing agency right now watching this, you have experience with growing the businesses uh, for them, but you're still stuck at the same retainer. Uh, even you growth partner guys, um, the, the furthest you've gone so far is getting a commission on each sale. That's still not been, it's not the same thing as being a partner. Okay, so, but you have the right idea. You deserve more, right? But is 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 things you want to do? Is levels to it? All right. So we'll catch you guys in the next one.